Exploring the insanely beautiful Arizona desert is my happy place. It has its dangers. He's not happy with me. <laughs> it's dynamic and vast beauty and absolute endless fun. Let me tell you, I wouldn't have it any other way. My name is AJ, and welcome back to Buckin' Life. Okay, well, I just arrived at the staging area at the beginning of Asco Mine Road, which is going to lead us right on to the back way to Black Canyon City. So I'm going to go ahead and get aired down, and uh, let's get this journey started. Now, on any normal run, I'll usually air down to about 15 to 18 PSI, give or take. I knew parts of this run were going to be rocky, so I decided to go down to 15, my lowest point. I don't run beadlocks, so I typically don't like to go below that threshold. So for those of you that are familiar with this area, you pretty much know where I'm at. For those of you that are not familiar with this area, this run starts in the Table Mesa Recreation Area, which is literally right in my backyard. Now Table Mesa is a very popular spot for off-roading and for shooting. Guns that is. So just be aware of that when you come out here. You'll be able to hear people shooting constantly, especially at the beginning of this run. You might be able to hear that right now. Somebody's having some fun plinking. It's one of the spots to go shooting at. This beautiful and serene water crossing you see here, I was extremely happy to see a decent amount of water through there. just passed the entrance for a trail called Collateral Damage, which is a well-known, super gnarly trail. Something I wouldn't take this on, <laughs> as it's my daily driver. And uh, you're pretty much guaranteed to get some damage going up Collateral Damage. I'm also gonna run through, I'm not gonna do the actual trail, but we're gonna go through the area where the trail upper and lower terminators are. Those are another set of pretty gnarly trails that uh, you don't want to run by yourself. Uh, they're more doable than collateral damage is, still super gnarly.
All right, so at this point, we've reached the beginning of the Black Canyon OHV Trail, not to be confused with the Black Canyon Hiking Trail. Two totally different things. Got a little corral right here. As you probably saw, I had a couple cattle running across the trail that way. That's the end of Asco Mine Trail right there. Now, Asco Mine Trail is rated as easy, and it was. Black Canyon OHV Trail is rated as difficult. So let's just see how difficult it really is. Now just to be clear, I did just recently say the Black Canyon OHV Trail. Now it is called that on Trails Off-Road. On Onyx, it's the back way to Black Canyon City. Black Canyon City, if you don't know what it is, it's uh, pretty much a highway town. I-17 runs smack dab right in the middle of it. Gone in the blink of an eye, you know, there's a few good restaurants there and that's really about it. Uh, very, very small highway town. Now, I thought I heard something as I was driving by this area, and I did. He's not happy that I'm here. I am not going to get too close, but you can definitely hear him. He's not happy with me. Hey, buddy. Okay, I'm going to leave him alone. He's not happy. That's the first rattler I've seen in the wild. At first, I thought I had a, an air leak in my tire. <laughs> Definitely not. You know, my brother Dave is gonna be quite upset he didn't come with me today. <laughs> He's been waiting to see a rattlesnake in the wild since he moved out here to Arizona. Sorry, Dave. Well, you can definitely tell that summer is coming. I have my AC on. Well, the windows are open, but I still got my AC on because it is a little warm. My Bronco's saying it's 81 degrees outside, and uh, usually anything past 80, I run my AC. But uh, what a beautiful day. Not a cloud in the sky at all. it says that this trail is uh, rated difficult so far it's not but I know that that rating is based due to the fact that we are gonna have to go through I think two rock gardens that are little obstacles and uh, you know they apparently it, uh, it has some beach ball sized boulders that can catch your diff and whatnot so you're gonna have to pick the right line but uh, so far you know it's, it's not too bad you get some pretty steep inclines and some ruts and it's pretty bumpy <laughs> but other than that it's not difficult yet it's actually really fun <laughs> not too bad though not too bad at all so i pulled off to the side real quick it's a pretty nice little vista point that i wanted to show you got some really excellent views heading out this way you can see all the plateaus in the background this is a trail that runs off behind me. I'm not exactly sure where that goes, but it is a pretty beautiful little area to check out. Now, if you can see it, way off in the distance there, that's Black Canyon City. That's where we're heading. 
So we're gonna make our way all the way around past the mountains and then down into Black Canyon City. Now you can probably tell, back way to Black Canyon City is pretty narrow, very twisty, and pretty rocky in a lot of areas. So even though it's only like a nine or 10 mile long trail, it is pretty slow going. It's a lot of fun. Even though it hasn't become difficult yet, you still gotta keep your eye out for jagged rocks and washouts and definitely some Arizona pinstriping. Well, somebody lost a Bronco hat. <laughs> Sitting right in the middle of the trail. So if you were out on Black Canyon OHV trail slash back way to Black Canyon City, I found your hat. So we're gaining some elevation now and it's definitely getting a lot more rocky. So I'm guessing I'm probably getting close to those rock gardens, but we're not there yet. What a fun trail so far. And the scenery is always obviously outstanding. Beautiful. Absolutely is slow going through this section now. So here's a nice little rocky section. As you can see, those two boulders are kind of in the way. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to come up this way as far as we can to the left, throw our passenger wheels over that boulder and drive right up on over them. Nice little fun section. Once in a while, those trailing arms really love getting in the way. Just give it a quick reposition and you're good to go. section was right by that saguaro that I just went through. We come to the next rocky section. It doesn't look overly difficult. You're gonna have to choose the right line here. Um, as you can see, some of those boulders are like right in the middle of the trail, so. 
not too bad as I can see. So you're just gonna wanna stay as far right as possible on that side. Apparently this is the toughest part of the trail. So let's just give it a quick walk. Most of it's nothing. This section might be a little tricky, but you don't wanna stick your tires on these two boulders and drive right up that way. That way your diff goes right through the middle. It doesn't get caught on anything. All right, let's give it a go. So we just made it through that section right there. It wasn't too bad. Like I said, you just have to choose the right line. I had my rear locker on, which most likely helped a lot, but uh, you know, it's better to be safe than sorry. Now, we just have to get through this last part. Remember, I'm gonna come up this way. I'm gonna come up this way, stick my tires on those two boulders and drive through off to the right hand side. Should be fairly easy. Well, we're through that section. I did get hung up a little bit on my trailing arm. I didn't want to get high centered <laughs> and get stuck and have to stack rocks and stuff like that. And I don't have a winch either, so. But we're through, so let's continue on. Now, like I said, apparently that was the most difficult part of the trail. So we shouldn't have anything like that from here on out. So it would appear that I reached the pinnacle of that rocky section. It looks like this is the highest point of the trail because it starts to go down and twist that way. It is a high point, that's for sure. There was one other twisty rocky section that I had to come through. I didn't get the whole thing on video, but it was pretty easy. It wasn't that hard. You just have to, uh, you know, make some tight turns. But boy, so beautiful out here. Another amazing day out on the trails. Another great bucking adventure. Here's 
nice little fun section that we're gonna make our way up. You're gonna be a little off camber in some instances, but even though it may look steep, it's not that bad. I'm just gonna follow it right along that V-notch right there and make my way up. See nothing to it. What a beautiful ride. There's nothing like a beautiful ride out in the desert. According to Trails Off-Road, I've got a few miles to go until the end. I have not been disappointed along this whole route. I had a really good amount of fun to it. You know, technical things. That rock garden was pretty fun. Some really nice, beautiful shelf roads that I'm on now. I would definitely highly recommend this run, especially for a group. A group run would be really fun out here. I've seen plenty of wildlife, including that rattlesnake. The first time I've ever seen one in the wild, that was awesome. So it's been a great day so far. 
just reached the top of this little vista point as well. I wanted to show you off in the distance there. That's Black Canyon City. We're getting there. What a beautiful run. I had no complaints at all. Great, great run. And I love the fact that uh, I have all these trails right in my backyard. I really couldn't ask for more. See Black Canyon City, I-17, off in the distance there. You can see why I say this is a highway town. You can see it's on both sides of the highway. Beautiful area, and this right here is the start of the Black Canyon hiking trail. So if you ever wanna go on a nice hike, Black Canyon hiking trail, starts right here, heads down that way. Pretty sure you can mountain bike it too. Yeah, and you can take horses on it. And that right there is the end of the trail. I'm gonna pull ahead, go to the other side, and get aired back up because the rest of the ride is gonna be all pavement. Can't go any further than this. I see a no trespassing sign, so this is obviously a uh, you know piece of private land. But as you can see, I'm just the regular roads right there, so I should be okay. Airing back up right here in this little section. Okay, well, this is something you don't want. I got stuck on my shoe. I'm glad it's not my skin. Let me find a stick so I can get it out. <laughs> hey, you little sucker. You're not gonna get me. Those teddy bear cacti, or choya, they're brutal. All right, so we're getting aired back up. Man, what a fun day. Look at how dusty my Bronco is. Very dusty trail, very dry, obviously. You know, this is Arizona. So my girl's gonna need a bath later on when I get home. It should take about 10 minutes to get aired up because of my quad Morphlate system. And then that will be on our way. I was only about 30 seconds in air, into airing up. I'm gonna see how long it takes here. And uh, I said previously in one of my last videos that right now I have a Smitty built single compressor. And it works fine, but I would like to have the uh, Morflate 10.6, which is a dual compressor, and I should be able to cut my air up time in half, so we'll see how long this takes. With my size tires and the dual Morflate compressor, it should take, I'm guessing probably about five minutes to air up. We'll see how long it takes with the Smitty Built. Okay, so my takeaways from this run. Trails Off-Road rates it as a five in difficulty. I would say that's pretty spot on considering those um, rock garden areas along the trail that you cannot bypass and have to go through. But yeah, absolute great trail. i definitely do it again. It's super close to home. I mean, it's only 12, 13 right now. Let me look on Onyx and see how long it took us. Well, we went 15 miles and it took us three hours and 40 minutes from right now, from start to right now. So not too bad, not too bad at all. Pretty quick and super fun run and absolutely very scenic. Okay, so we're aired up to 37 PSI and it took nine minutes and 40 seconds. Not too bad for a single Smitty built compressor. Not too bad at all. You know, maybe I'll just wait until this one craps the bed until I get a new one. I mean, Almost 10 minutes isn't really that bad. I'm really not sure. I need to spend 300 bucks on a dual compressor. Or do I?
Well, that's going to do it, guys. I want to thank you guys again for joining me on Bucking Life, where I live my life one bucking venture at a time. Till next time, guys.